pray with you. Prepare our hearts, O oh Lord, for every challenge that would come in our path on our journey. Help us, O Lord, to learn and to grow and to then be better faithful servants to you. Amen. Amen. Welcome the unexpected. Welcome the unexpected. In Psalm 118, the psalmist, this particular psalm is what's called an enthronement. Yeah, it's an enthronement psalm. And it was used by the Israelites, uh, usually during the coronation ceremony. When the the uh, of the king was getting ready to be crowned, and it'd be a big celebration, and the people, it will in in ancient Hebrew culture, uh, the belief was that the king was uh, the messianic representative, and that that there would come that day when the savior of the world would come. But the king would tie us over until, until <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll settle for it. That the king we got, we got this king, and hopefully this king will guide us in the ways of faithfulness and trust, and in in, in the will and in the laws of God. And so, in Psalm 118, there's this one particular phrase uh, that says, "I thank you that you have answered me and become my salvation." Talking to God. What, isn't it great to be able to say to God, thank you? Yes. Things may not be perfect and going right like I'd like them to right now. Or I may be going through something, sickness, problems, a job, whatever. But to be able to just stop and take a minute and say, thank you for becoming myself. Getting our hearts and minds and spirits to that place of trust in God is, 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 is a bit problematic, though. It is. It's, it's not something that everybody just jumps into and can flick on like a switch. Because of our own internal tendencies to have expectations. We, we do. We, we have a lot of expectations that we superimpose upon ourselves and expectations that we superimpose upon everybody around us. <laughs> there, we want things to be a particular way. We want people around us to be and behave in particular ways so that they'll keep us happy. Right? We, we like everybody around us to make us happy and keep us there. Because we don't like being upset. Somebody say amen. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't want, we don't want, especially the people closest to us, mm. to push our buttons and get us in a tit, in a hissy fit. Mm -mm. Right? No. Right? We don't. We don't like that. We don't want it. But, but we got to remember there's a process that's happening inside us that we're the ones that create these expectations. We're the ones that do that. And we expect everybody else to be uh, have mental telepathy. Huh? Right? You didn't know that I need you to be that way? <laughs> After all this time of knowing me and we love one another, you should have known. Anybody here want to own up that they have mental telepathy? <laughs> oh, you got them all right. I'm scared. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be just wonderful if we all just knew? And in that way, no, all right, no, ooh, no. Ooh, no. <laughs> but 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 we end up always so disappointed when the people near us don't know what would make me happy. Right? <laughs> and when the people near us are getting it right, yay! Oh, everything's 
going good, the loving is good, mm. the tenants are good, the hanging out is all oh, everything's work, but when they don't get it right. <laughs> you all can fill in the blanks of what happens when they when, when the folk around us don't get it right. Imagine now this scene that is portrayed, that is given to us here in the Gospels. <clears throat> Jesus says to his disciples, uh, go to such and such a place and there you will find this colt that's never been written. Go to the persons who have it and say, I, I want this colt. And, and when they say to you, who is asking for it, say, the Lord needs it. And wouldn't that be a great answer to just be able to, <laughs> a great answer to be able to just say to somebody? You walk up and I, I see that nice car you're driving and I just climb in and get behind the wheel and say, the Lord needs it. <laughs> wouldn't that be great? <laughs> that would be so convenient. Then we can just have whatever we want. The, the, the distinction is, is that Jesus did tell them to do it. <laughs> We don't do it on our own. It was something that the Lord told them to do. So they obey, and, and as, as we see in the text, it unfolds. They, they get the colt. Now, they don't get a stallion. They don't get this big chariot. They get this humble creature. They get Jesus up on the colt, and they leave from the Mount of Olives with Jesus riding on this, on this young colt. Um... Envision as Jesus, it's just, a, it's just a relatively small entourage. It's Jesus and his disciples, and they're following along on this little colt. And it's like, it, it's almost like they kind of turn a corner, and all of a sudden there's this big multitude of people going, Yay! Here's, here is the one who worked all these miracles! Wow, here he is! He's, he's, gonna, he's the Messiah! He's the one that is going to save us. That's what Hosanna means. Uh, oh, save. Oh, save. You are the one who will save. You are the one who's going to bring salvation into being. You're going to make... This is the one who's going to finally make it happen. Sometimes we say that to the people we love. Oh, you're my soul, man. You the one I always dreamed. I don't know how I would have ever made. Oh, I'm just complete. And everything I ever needed. Everything I ever wanted is wrapped up in. We can relate to that, can't we? Yeah. Well, some of us can. <laughs> oh, and that's what the crowd was doing with Jesus. They were doing that to Jesus that day. Now, independent of the fact that he's riding a colt, not a stallion, he doesn't have this big entourage of kingly people with lots of robes and all this nobility. No, no, he's with a ragtag motley crew of guys. <laughs> come on, you know, they come around the corner, he's riding a colt, right? You see, they would have, like, you could think that would have kind of given them a clue that this guy's not quite about all this fanfare and this hoopla, but, in, but they did remember all that he had done, the miracles he had worked people he had healed, the dead that he had raised, the, the people that he had fed, the sick that he had, he had brought up. He, they remembered that and they said, wow, here he is, Hosanna. Here is the Messiah. And so they began throwing the palm branches right down there in their cloaks in the road before, before him. As Jesus sees this crowd, he does weep because he knows what's about to come down. Because we all can relate to knowing when somebody is looking at us with glowing eyes and effervescent anticipation, and we know in our hearts and in our minds that their expectations may not get met. That, that your agenda, that 
what 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 is being expected. <coughs> you not go down that way. And what's so so in this crowd we have three sets of people. We have the crowd. We have the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes, the, the, the critical folk, and we have Jesus' disciples, the people that are close to him. The Pharisees and Sadducees said, Jesus, tell these folk to shut up, because they're proclaiming you as Messiah. Don't let them think that you're the Messiah. And he could say, if these folk don't proclaim it, very rocks will cry out. You don't want me, Pharisees, to be the Messiah, but I am. You don't like it, but I am. The disciples believe it and know it and claim it. The crowd, unfortunately, we know where the crowd goes in a few days, right? We know the story. <coughs> the crowd, with all their expectations, disappears. And in a few days, Many in that same crowd will be screaming, crucify. I'm worried that we do that to each other sometimes. Don't we? When we don't live up to each other's expectations, we, we swing that pendulum. When we were talking last week about the pendulum swing, <laughs> you know, we'll swing from, Hosanna, oh, you everything, to crucify you. <laughs> All I want us to say today, I know there's a lot to unpack in these texts today, but I'd be here till midnight. But I need us to, to be aware, to, I mean, to be proactively and intentionally aware of the expectations that often generate and evolve within our own minds and spirit. Be aware of them. And when we begin to superimpose those on others around us, it's, it's a, it isn't, is it not a formula for disappointment and heartache and failure? And, and we need to... Number one, keep our own expectations in check and be patient with one another. Be loving with one another, recognizing that everything that we expect may not always manifest itself because the shoe is also on the other foot. It ain't all about me getting what I expect out of you. It's the other way around, too. Right? Yeah. Are we ever going to be fair with one another? I mean, really fair. Not just when we're in each other's arms and loving embrace and, and everything is good. No, but in the tough time. Because our faith is best applied and most relevant in the tough time. Times. Not the sweet, flowery, savory, wonderful times. It's in those tough times when a tough decision has to be made and when I'm hurting and bitter and angry and disappointed. Because it's in those times when it's my motion, emotions that are all a surge and everything. And right in the middle of all that emotional chaos is my expectation. Right in the middle of it, right? And so, I believe that one of the many things that we can glean from the, the Palm Sunday texts is that even though Jesus knew that these folk had these expectations of him, that would, would not come to fruition yet, Those that hang in there through the horror of Passion Week, through the heartache and pain and suffering of Good Friday, and hang
hang in there for Easter Sunday. <laughs> because we know, and it is our proclamation of faith, that where once there was death, there is eternal life. Where there was once heartache and bitterness and tragedy, there is triumphant joy. And we can claim it. Not just about Jesus, but about everyday living. In our everyday lives, when crap happens. Huh? When, when stuff happens that says, oh, I give up. I can't do that. We can't make it. Jesus did it, and we got him on our side. So, trust that what you may expect may not happen, but the unexpected may be even better. <laughs> Would you pray with me? Dearest Lord, help us in our heart of hearts to know that the people around us are sent to us to, to guide us through the good and the bad and that your spirit is with us to strengthen and guide us through the good and the bad, the up and the down, and that, and that Help us, Lord, to keep our expectations in check and to trust that you will guide and provide. Thank you for the salvation you bring. Thank you for the salvation you bring. Amen. Amen.